Okay, well, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for being here with us today. We're so excited that you've decided to join us. I'm Jerry Moyo, former mayor of the city of West Palm Beach, and for the last six weeks, I've been working with Mayor James and the West Palm Beach COVID-19 Response Unit on relief and recovery activities in the city. <clears throat> I've been tasked as a group leader for nonprofits and faith-based group. And I wanna introduce you to the folks that have been working with me for the past six weeks. First of all, um, Pastor Jimmy Scroggins. Jimmy, wave your hand, say hello. Uh, he's with the Family Church and several other churches in our community, but Family Church. Um, Reverend Gerald Kisner with Tabernacle Baptist Church. Um, thank you, Reverend Kisner, for being here. Uh, Jessica Cesare, who is the CEO of Nonprofits First. Jessica? And with her is Adrian Tynes, who is the Director of Accreditation with Nonprofits First. We also have today Tara Laxer, the Director of Development for the Al Alpert Jewish Family Services. Tara? Kevin Jones, Coordinator of Community Initiatives for the City of West Palm Beach and Jose Tagle, Neighborhood Services Coordinator with the City of West Palm Beach. Our charge in this process has been to work with our nonprofit and faith-based community to identify two things. First of all, what resources are available? And then what are the needs? So let's take a minute to talk about the resources. You know, our nonprofit community serves us so well every year, all through the years. And what we wanted to know is what they are doing now during um, this COVID time. So we're working on with nonprofits to identify what nonprofits are still providing services and during this time, what those services are. Our faith-based community has been providing a series of services at this time as well. And they've been helping us to think about how we can worship in safety during this time of social distancing. We also wanted to talk about the needs. So for our nonprofits to do the work that they need to do, they also have needs. And we've asked them to identify those needs so that we can help them address them. <clears throat> so before we move on, we have a couple of housekeeping items to discuss, okay? There are three more town hall meetings after this one. Two today, one at 5 p.m. and one at 6.30, and another one tomorrow at 1 p.m. For more information on the town halls this week um, and West Palm Beach's response to efforts to COVID-19, please visit www.wpb.org forward slash COVID-19. So, um, as I said, with us today, we have people from Nonprofits First, Albert Jewish Family Services, faith-based leaders from Tabernacle Baptist Church and the Family Church, and representatives from the city of West Palm Beach. Um, we also wanna hear from you, the public, about any questions you have. We will take questions and answers at the end of the meeting. There are three ways that you can submit your own questions during this meeting. First of all, you can email us at townhall at wpb.org, or uh, if you're watching us on Facebook in the live stream, uh, you can post your questions in the comment section on Facebook. Or if you're watching us on Zoom, you can type your questions in the Q&A box and click send. We'll be monitoring your questions throughout the town hall, so please ask away. Okay, let's jump into today's program. Um, I'm going to start with Jessica and Adrian. Uh, and Jessica, or, or, or Adrian, whichever, I guess, Jessica, maybe you can start with this. Will you tell us a little bit about Nonprofits First and the work that you do? Because I suspect there are people out there who are not familiar with your organization. So tell us a little bit about it. Sure, so Nonprofits First is really a management support and resource organization for the nonprofit sector. 
So we help literally hundreds of nonprofits in the community, either through accreditation, membership, financial resources, education, professional development. Um, let's see, what, what did I leave out, Adrian? <laughs> Anything? Development. <laughs> yeah. So we've yeah. really been spending a lot of time since COVID began, really helping the nonprofit sector navigate and train them on what resources and opportunities there are available to help them through this crisis. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. So Adrian, I'm going to turn to you. Um, can you tell us about um, nonprofit, what nonprofits are doing in our community and what services they're providing? Um, and I know that, um, tell, tell the listeners a little bit about the questionnaire that went out and some of the information that you gather. Um, and if you're ready to have us put up the playbook, we can do that too, but just let us know when you're ready to have that. Yeah, okay. Um, absolutely, and, and really thank you so much for, for the opportunity to talk about the awesome work that uh, our local nonprofit organizations are doing. Uh, we're really proud to serve as a resource for uh, those organizations in our community right now uh, in these extraordinary times that we're living through. Uh, so we sent a survey out to our nonprofit organizations to find out who's offering services at this time and, and really what services are being offered. Um, and it was really encouraging to find out uh, what people are doing. There's, there's been a ton of creativity and innovation uh, and resilience displayed by, by these community leaders. Um, so we sent a, uh, that survey out and you can find a list of the organizations that are currently offering services on the City of West Palm Beach uh, website under the COVID-19 directory. And you'll see that that's up on the screen now. Yep, um, so it's on the COVID-19 directory, but uh, you can also find it on the community toolbox. And that community toolbox is being updated uh, regularly as we're getting more responses to that survey. Uh, you could also get the community toolbox in Spanish and in Creole uh, for those community members that, that speak those languages. Um, so it's a, a really incredible resource. There are a ton of organizations that are still offering their services, uh, either with social distancing uh, precautions in place or, or offering them virtually in some, some uh, circumstances. Um, and I really want to encourage anybody who's on the call today and, and might be experiencing a need for help uh, to take comfort in the fact that knowing that you're you're not alone in this, many of our neighbors are going to be accessing these services for the first time, uh, and our nonprofit community is really re uh, ready and willing to help you. So take a look at the toolbox and, and don't hesitate to reach out for the supports that uh, that you find in there. So Adrian and Jessica, if I, um, you know, staying inside so much and having to deal with. Um, uh, losing your job perhaps and having your children home from school and you know we might be some people might be experiencing mental health issues is there an agency out there that could be helpful to them and, and how do they access that certainly so there are a number of organizations uh, that are offering those types of services right now and you can find a lot of them in the toolbox uh, I know for certain that the mental health association is offering uh, virtual support groups uh, for people that are having uh, issues at this time. Uh, some of our other uh, mental health, health service organizations in the community, um, like uh, Center for Child Counseling, Center for Family Services, are also there to help and are offering um, telehealth and telecounseling services. You can also reach out to 211. Um, they offer a crisis hotline there. Uh, you can dial 211 to reach them, or you can text your zip code to 898-211 and, and get resources there as well. Wow. And what about, um, you know, I know food has been a big thing and food distribution. Yep. And, you know, if somebody doesn't have a car, um, can they get access to food? How do, how do they do that? Or yes. if, Sure. So a lot of a lot of the services that are offered right now are um, are, are drop by and pick up type services. And United Way just recently uh, launched a food tracker, uh, which is an interactive website. As long as you've got internet access, you can get on there. You can zoom into onto your neighborhood to find out if there's a, a food pantry or a food uh, service that's that's near you that's within walking distance. Uh, and some of our some of our special populations like seniors. Uh, there is the possibility of, of food service delivery at home. 
but uh, looking at that United Way food tracker uh, is a great resource there. So that's on the United Way website. So folks could go to that website and, and get the food tracker. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Or you can just Google United Way of Palm Beach County food tracker and it should We pop also up. have it on our website as well at Nonprofits First. Correct. Yeah. So there's a link on, nonprof on Nonprofits First. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right. Is there, are there any other um, thing, uh, things that we would want folks to know? about the operations of nonprofits at this point? Uh, you know, any, anything else we should need to share with them about that in general? Um, I'll go ahead and take that one. I, it's, okay. That's kind of hard to say, but as we all know, as we're going through this, things change every day. So if there's somebody that you would like to reach out to or you want to use 211, as Adrian mentioned, that's a great place to start. Uh, nonprofits have been extraordinarily creative, as Adrian mentioned. Their resources are, are prolific during this time. And um, if you go to the toolbox again at the City of West Palm Beach, or whether you look through 211 or you look at our website at Nonprofits First, any of those are great resources to find out what's available. Okay, great. Well, thank you for that. I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions and uh, we'll be back to you uh, to talk about the needs of nonprofits in a few minutes. Uh, but now I'm going to go to Tara. Um, Tara, as I said, is with the Alpert Jewish Family Services, and I'd like her to take a few minutes to talk about some of the programs and services being offered at their nonprofit. I know you're doing a lot of tele telework. <laughs> yes, a lot of tele mental health we've been doing. Um, we have this thing called the High Resource and Referral Line. So anytime we're going through any issue, regardless if it's food or a mental health crisis, it could be more than one issue. So we have full-time master level professionals picking up this call, these calls through our resource and referral line at 561-684-1991. It's in your toolbox below. And they do a full assessment. So we try to help everybody every which way that we can. Over the past six weeks, we have seen an increase with mental health services needs. So we tell people, regardless if it's any of us on the phone, you know, people are going to feel anxious. They're going to feel depressed more than normal. So we are continuing to help serve people. We're still seeing our current clients. We're taking a new clients. We are, what we're doing is because there's such an increase in need, we're having virtual support groups like they mentioned. Um, some of the things that we're doing is coping with our new reality. And we even have an addition for parents because it's really difficult now, regardless if you're working or you're not working, and you're trying to be a teacher because you're forced to be a teacher at this point full time. We also have a program called Family Survivors of Suicide Support Group. And as all this is going on, people are still dealing with terrible things in their life, right? So they still need some help. Yeah. And then um, we also have a drop-in support group for our domestic abuse survivors that are also going through a difficult time. So these are some of the main programs that we're doing virtually that's free to the public. And like I said, we're still caring for our clients new um, and old. And then some of the other programming is we're still serving our Holocaust survivors. Uh, Palm Beach County in the south end of their county, our sister agency is Ruth Rails. So they're serving their Holocaust survivors as we are from Boynton Beach to the Treasure Coast. And then our friends in Goodman and Broward County are also serving. We're fortunate to serve these clients. We've been serving them since 1995. We were able to serve them because the International Claims Conference has trusted the three of us to take care of these folks. And to date, we're probably a little bit over 200,000 hours in home care through our clients that we've been taking care of. So we're doing that. We're continuing to work with our older adult services. And then this is also a difficult time for families that have an adult, adult child with a disability, which we do house. We do have two homes there. So our life planning for families still up and running. And um, we have some of those Zoom conferences still going. So if people need help, don't be shy. Don't be scared. It's okay not to be okay. And we're all here from you. And I just want to also thank Jessica for everything that Nonprofits First has been doing. It, we work with them very closely, and they're a phenomenal resource to us. So thank you. Awesome. Um, Tara, 
Um, do you have to be Jewish to use your services? You do not. There are some um, services that are specific to the Jewish community, but we serve the Jewish community as well as all of our neighbors. So they can call us. <laughs> and I, and I, I know that I knew the answer to that, but because I, <laughs> because I know that you've done so much work in the West Palm Beach community um, and work with so many different families in our different neighborhoods. And, uh, uh, and, and I also heard you say, that some of your services are free. Uh, and I think people need to understand that too. So that's great. Yeah. Super. So now I want to pivot for a minute because um, we have these nonprofits out there doing all this great work, but they have needs too. Um, they're adversely affected by all of this COVID stuff. So talk to us, um, Adrian, Jessica, Tara, talk to us a little bit about what you have learned and what you know to be the needs of some of the nonprofits out there. So the folks listening to us today, if, if they're able, can help at the nonprofits out. Um, and I know that there's a new website we were talking about, um, Adrian, that maybe, no. we don't wanna talk about the census yet, do we? <laughs> okay. Um, Adrian, we were talking about um, the, the website that matches volunteers with needs. And maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Oh, happy to, happy to. Um, yeah, so we're partnering with a national organization called Inspiring Service and uh, to launch a, a website. Uh, it's a multi-use platform, and so it's going to help us do a number of different things. Uh, it'll help us track the impact that COVID-19 has had on the local community in terms of, of funding, you know, because a lot of organizations had uh, special events and things like that uh, scheduled for this time that we've all been uh, working from home and, and, and social distancing and stuff. So there's been a, a tremendous amount of, uh, of support lost um, from those special events that didn't happen, uh, but also volunteer hours lost. You know, it's, it's a little bit harder for, for folks to go into organizations and, and serve that way. Um, so this, this website is going to help us track uh, the impact both in terms of funding and volunteer hours lost, but it's also going to connect uh, donors and volunteers to the causes that they care about most. So it's going to have um, an opportunity for organizations to tell you exactly how the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has affected them in terms of funding uh, and volunteer hours, but it's also going to let them uh, connect you to their donation pages. Uh, to uh, tangible items that they might need, like uh, diapers or formula, uh, durable medical equipment, um, and then I've they'll seen, be. I've seen some of that on your on your web page right now. Um, that that has this is nonprofit's first web page that shows mm -hmm. it. Okay. Good. Yeah, so one of the first things that we did when, when this all started happening is we realized that there are going to be some pretty immediate needs that these nonprofit organizations have, right? So we sent a survey out uh, to all the organizations and asked them just to, to send us your requests, let us know what your greatest areas of need are, and they, what did they respond? Um, and so if you, if you flip through that site, you'll see a number of really great organizations in our community um, expressing the, the most immediate needs that they have. And so the information that's on there is going to be transferred over to that, um, to that new website when that pops up. Uh, that should be populated by early next week. And so it'll be at nonprofitsfirstcares.org uh, is where you'll be able to connect with that. And so the organizations are going to be able to express their financial need, uh, their need for, for tangible items that you might have uh, available at your home, um, but then also any of the virtual uh, volunteer opportunities that they've got going on right now. So it's going to be a cr an incredible resource uh, for organizations, kind of a one-stop shop for how you can help our local nonprofit organizations. Awesome. Yeah. What else about the needs of nonprofits? Anything else that Tara or Jessica you want to add? Tara, you want to answer? Um, I, I would just say patience, right? Lots <laughs> right. of patience. With all of us because you know we're all we're all trying to deal with multiple issues at a time so just have patience with any clients that you're talking to and with the community at large a lot of people are getting different information so on our end we're just trying to get the information out and just you know take the time to talk to people and and help them as much as you can yeah 
Well, thank you, ladies. Um, we are going to turn to our faith-based representatives. Um, Reverend Scroggins, I'm going to start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the services that Family Church is providing, some of the experiences you've had? I think people want to be able to continue um, with their practice of their faith, and they want to know how to do that and do it safely. And what, what's your recommendation around that? Well, I, I think uh, one of the things that we can be proud of in our community is I think virtually all of the congregations, um, um, Christian congregations as well as other faiths, are following um, government guidelines and trying to worship from home. Um, that's what we do at Family Church. I know I'm part of an organization called Church United, which is a bunch of churches in our community. And uh, all of the Church United churches of which I'm aware are worshiping from home, uh, providing uh, worship experiences online. And we're a part of another network called the Palm Beach Baptist Network, which is about 80 Baptist churches in town. And all of them are doing the same thing. So I, I would just say I'm, I'm uh, very proud that our, our governor and our mayor have chosen not to legally restrict churches or religious uh, groups from worshiping as they see fit. But I'm equally proud that our religious community has responded by doing the right thing and trying to be good neighbors and trying to keep people safe. And so that uh, speaks very well of our cooperation between the faith-based community and, uh, and, our, and our city. Uh, at Family Church, we've done a couple of things. We've had some great experiences. Like uh, one of the sad things right now is a lot of um, seniors in high school are missing out on a lot of things that would normally be associated with the, the end of their senior year. And we, we had a drive-through graduation event a few weeks ago that was very uh, well attended and well received. It was very exciting. And seniors in high school and their families decorated their vehicles and drove through. And we have set up a little radio station where we could broadcast about each student. And we all wore masks and stood out there with signs and cheered for them. And they seemed to really, really appreciate that a whole lot. So that was they probably, I know you're thinking, yeah, everybody wish you would wear a mask. I know. But we, we did that. Um, we have worked hard to care for families. So there's a lot of marriages that are experiencing a lot of difficulty in this time. So we're providing, we've provided some online marriage events and training to help people communicate better in their marriage and uh, do, um, you know, improve conflict resolution. Um, we, we have uh, some events for singles. We also have some online events for um, parents. We've also been networking parents who are homeschooling for the first time. So in our congregation, we have a number of people who homeschool all the time. We've been able to connect them with parents who are homeschooling for the first time. And maybe they oh, can that's learn. Idea. That's been a huge uh, help to a lot of people I know. And then we have some classes that we call grief share. So we've connected some people who are really grieving during this time for different reasons finding ways for them to connect as well as working with our recovery community. So those are some things that our churches are doing at Family Church, the Palm Beach Baptist Network, and Church United. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Kistner, how about uh, at Tabernacle? You got to unmute yourself. Uh, all right. There you uh, go. Uh, we, we've been doing a number of things to try to help our uh, parishioners feel still connected. We, we don't use the term social distancing. We use physical distancing. We're still socially connected. And we try to do that through, point. Our, <laughs> our, yeah, through our virtual services. Uh, we have our church services that we film and we put them on Sunday. Uh, we have our prayer and praise services that we're going to start up again this week. And we've continued our Bible studies. All of these are virtual, which are ways that we have kept our parishioners together. We've also let them know that if there are any needs that they might have to call us at our office and we'll see if we can try to meet them, particularly as it relates to our senior citizens. Now, that's internally. Externally, we've tried to do a number of things in the Northwest community. We've given out over 1,200 face masks over the last couple of weeks to residents in the neighborhood and outside of the neighborhood. Uh, we also have our a Sunday hot meal breakfast that we provide a hot meal. Uh, they come to the back of the church, drive through or walk through. We provide them with a hot meal. Uh, we were able to start that back up uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Reverend Jones and I were actually in the kitchen cooking. Uh, <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> on Facebook, so you, you might be able to catch it. Uh, <laughs> Today, as a matter of fact, at 5 o'clock, between 5 and 6, uh, 
with the Northwest community and with um, the Keller Williams Real Estate Company and the Palm, Keller Williams Palm Beach Island, we're going to be giving out food uh, from five to six in our parking lot. Uh, and then again, on this Tuesday, we're going to give out face masks again. Uh, also in the process of getting ready to set up some testing with Found Care and uh, the FAU School of Nursing as a collaborative with the Northwest uh, Community Health Alliance, which is a clinic that we have set up across the street from our church in our, in our new educational building. So those are the kind of things we're trying to do externally and, and as well as with internally, but as, as Pastor Scroggins said, the biggest thing for us is to worship at home. Stay at home, stay safe, keep the faith. And you might be seeing a graphic coming up there. Wow. I encourage you, uh, hashtag worship at home, WPB. We believe that the church is not just that physical building, but is a spirit that goes from heart to heart and breast to breast. And with the technologies that we have, we're still able to see each other like we're doing today with this town hall. Uh, we're, we want to also spiritually keep our folk encouraged and believe that the God we serve will get us through this. Lisa, when you, um, just to clarify, when both of you talk about um, wor worshiping at home, um, is that done? Uh, like through technology with with one of you or how, what if I'm at home and I want to worship at home is there somewhere I can link into a service that you might be conducting oh yeah you can check us out on uh, Facebook or you can get us on our website and we got a service that will be coming up this Sunday just tune us in on Facebook and you'll see us plus uh, I think you were on YouTube wasn't it I saw yeah, it on YouTube yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, we do the same thing. So you can go to our website, gofamilychurch.org. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook as well. And most churches are. So there really is a lot of opportunity. And we found that a lot of people who don't go to church normally every Sunday is a matter of their rhythm. Yeah. During this time, I guess they have limited options. And um, we found some people really connecting or reconnecting mm -hmm. um, because of the opportunity and kind of the, the limited options that they're experiencing. So we found that to be really good. I know Pastor Kisner has as well. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to get all dressed up. You can just work with the PJs if you like. Or the house on Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. Um, before we move on to questions and answers, I have a couple of things I want to talk about. Um, one issue that's come up is that people, uh, people who want to donate goods as they are cleaning out their closets during this time. How many of you have cleaned out your closet? <laughs> yeah. So um, that, it's great news that you want to donate, but we ask that you contact the organization you're going to donate to those goods to before you drop them off to make sure they're open and there's somebody there to deal with the goods that you have for them. Um, we're ex asking individuals to box it, don't drop it. And here is our graphic on that. Um, and you know, box up your items you want to donate, drop them off at a donation center that you know is open, or put them aside until those centers are open. We have heard from some centers that um, people are just dropping things off and they're just not able to handle it at this point. So you want your donations to make a difference. Make sure that you drop them off at a place that's able to take them or wait until that place opens up. So thank you. Okay, well, thank you all. And now I want to open the floor to questions. Um, what questions do we have? Hi, Mayor Moyo. <clears throat> uh, what a great panel. Our first uh, question is actually not a question. Uh, one of our listeners is hoping that Tara Laxer can repeat the number she referenced for services. Uh, Tara, you're muted. Uh, let me unmute myself. <clears throat> Um, I should be unmuted. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. It's 561-684-1991. And they do a great job there, so don't hesitate to call. Thank you so much. Um, so one of our listeners asked through email, should we send money to specific nonprofits like ones like or a single place? I can answer that one. 
uh, if there's a nonprofit organization that you connect with that you ordinarily support, I would encourage you to continue that support because they, they need it now more than ever, um, especially for those organizations that are providing critical services like food and shelter, uh, these mental health services that we're talking about. They, they need your support more than ever, but there's also a community effort. Uh, several of the local funders are, are participating in it, uh, like United Way of Palm Beach County, the Community Foundation, uh, if you go to either of those sites or if you go to Nonprofits First website, uh, you'll find a link there. Um, and so those those organizations are, are raising money uh, that will be distributed out uh, in to the organizations that have the greatest amount of need. Um, so I believe at this point they've they've raised just over two million dollars uh, to oh. to go to organizations directly for uh, in response to the COVID nineteen pandemic. You know, I, I would um, also think about the needs um, once we get through this right. crisis and start going to recovery. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm certain that there will be uh, more people homeless. Uh, so we need to think about how we're going to serve our homeless population. I'm certain there will be more people out of jobs. So we need to think about how we're going to prepare people for the new jobs that will exist after right. this and what will those jobs look like. Uh, so I just think just thinking about what the, the new world will look like uh, once we get through this time. Uh, and those organizations are going to need support because there'll be greater demands on them. Very true, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is from Dr. David Carruth. It's God's Perfect Timing Ministry serves the homeless where they live on the street. His question is, how can the homeless that he serves get access to food services? Alex, would you repeat that, please? <clears throat> how can homeless get access to food services if a nonprofit might be uh, assisting them, yeah. but not providing that service? Well, you know, I think that um, the Lord's Place is still uh, doing intake uh, and seeing people and trying to get people placed. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that that's a place where folks can go. Uh, the Homeless Coalition of Palm Beach County. Uh, unfortunately, uh, and I'm going to get on my soapbox for a minute. <laughs> unfortunately, here in Palm Beach County, we don't have emergency shelters. Um, so, uh, if I am homeless tonight, uh, there's no place for me to go. So, um, I would recommend folks reach out to the Lord's Place Homeless Coalition. Vida Nova is doing some work um, at Vida Nova every Thursday. There is a place where homeless people can take showers. They have a portable shower unit. Uh, and I think, uh, I know today, um, the homeless people who were coming there to get showers were also getting tested. Uh, and uh, they also have, uh, are able to get a set of clean clothes when they go there. And that's all free. Um, Adrian or Jessica, you want to add to that? Well, this is another one of those uh, where I'm going to suggest, um, if, if possible, that, that's where 211 always comes in because they're keeping track of that every single day on where these services are. And then as far as food goes, Adrian mentioned that, um, that food uh, website that they can go to our website. You do have to have internet access to do that, but you can you know, access it from your phone. You can access it from anywhere as to where they can you know, access food immediately. Is it locally? It's, it's kind of like a hot map of where things are located. So if there's something near someone, they'll be able to find it. But it doesn't matter whether somebody's in a home or not in a home. You know, those are, those, that food is available to them. And there's, there's a lot more out there than I think people realize when you check that out. I was really surprised and pleasingly so. Mm -hmm. And a number of the organizations that serve the communities but didn't necessarily do uh, operate a food pantry or provide food services before are doing that now. So I know of a number of organizations that, you know, for example, they might be doing uh, youth mentoring programs or, or things like that, that have realized that the families that they, of the youth that they serve need food right now. So they're, they're also distributing food. So I'd encourage you to... Um, to check out that United Way uh, food tracker and um, if you're not going to have internet access or a phone or a computer where you're providing services to those folks, you know, maybe print out a couple of them 
with an eight block uh, area uh, and see what, what services are provided in that area. Thank you. We've had several more questions come in since we started this segment. The next one is, what are, are there any plans for in-person religious services? Uh, Reverend Kisler, I see you're smiling. Unmute yourself first. Go ahead. No. Yeah. Well, as far as I'm concerned, not anytime soon. Uh, I want to make sure that the science and the health experts have assured us that it is safe to go back. All we have to do, I, I keep saying, is think about the pandemic of 1918. When everyone got really excited, they thought we had reached an apex. They had parades in the streets in Pittsburgh and other cities, and they got real excited. And then it came back with a vengeance. Uh, I don't want to see that happen to us. And I know everybody's a little uptight, but we've only been sheltered for maybe a month. It's not like we've been sheltered for a year or six months, uh, and we still can go for essential services. Uh, we ought to just be a little more careful about this. And so as far as I'm concerned, we're going to keep doing virtual worship uh, until we're really pretty sure that it's going to be safe. Yeah, and I would just say, I would just add to that, you know, with uh, the statewide guidelines right now, I think even though they're not specific to churches, I think we would fall under the same guidelines as uh, like a theater or a, a concert, things like that. And so right now, those aren't possible under the current guidelines. Even in the next phase, if we're able to go to another phase, it'll still be 50 people or less, which for a church like ours or Reverend Kisner, that, that's, that's not really helping us that much. And so, um, you know, we're really looking weeks and weeks, months down the road before we would be contemplating anything like an in-person uh, worship gathering. Although I do know that um, in this summer, I'm very certain that some, especially smaller churches will probably start um, trying to go, go forward. Um, but I'm with Reverend Kisner on that. We're, our, our horizon is, is far out. We, we have no plans um, with any firm dates on it to, to begin in-person services. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. One of our viewers asked how they can get in touch with the domestic group, domestic support group Tara mentioned. Call that 561-684-1991 number and um, we can get you involved internally in some of the things that we're doing. And if it's not a right fit, we'll also um, refer you out to the specific group. So we'll make sure that you get the help that you need. Thank you for that. Trisha asks, <clears throat> how can a nonprofit make sure they are listed with nonprofits first? Do they have, is it membership based? So I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, we do have a membership program at Nonprofits First, as well as, of course, Adrian runs the accreditation program as well. So there's different ways to be involved. But if they want to fill out that needs survey, if that's what they're talking about in terms of being listed, that's all they need to do is go on that that link that we have on our website that you showed earlier and complete the form and they'll be listed with the needs. But it is a membership organization and if you're a nonprofit and you don't belong, you might <laughs> Good for you, Jerry. <laughs> I'll give you some free, uh, free press here. It's, yeah. It's, it's, and they're it's, free. Right. It's worth it. Uh, it's a very helpful organization and, you know, nonprofits struggle with you know, how do I raise money? What does governance look like? Um, you know, just a lot of questions. Well, how do I get a board? All of those things nonprofits can help you with. Nonprofit first can help you with. Thank you. We have time for a couple more questions, one or two. The next one uh, is regarding something that Reverend Kisner mentioned on testing. Do people need to provide any ID to be tested? Well, for ours, uh, no, uh, they don't have to show any ID for what we're requiring. Um, you know, they just have to show up and uh, we test them. Now they use, they have to give us some address where we can send our phone number where we can give them their results. Uh, but as far as uh, insurance or anything, they don't have to have that. And, and I, I just want to add, if, if you don't have an ID and you need an ID, you can go to legal aid and they will help you get something called a community ID. We started that when, when back when I was mayor, 
um, that you can go to legal aid and get a community ID, and that can be used for lots of different um, lots of different purposes. Thank you. We've had. I may, uh, you know, there is a, a testing site also this week or this weekend, this Saturday at Gaines Park yeah. from nine to one. Uh, so just call 822-1425. Uh, they do like for you to schedule an appointment, but there's one taking place this Saturday as well. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for mentioning that at Gaines Park, right? Super. Great. We've had quite a few questions come in on the different platforms regarding uh, the uh, religious services, online services. Is there a place where folks can go to see which services are available when, such as the nonprofits first have with 211? I don't think there's anything like that. I think they would just have to use Google or go to a specific uh, church that they're interested in. Um, yeah, and you know, we, we have. Uh, you know, Tara, we know that the synagogues are doing the same thing. So I think if you go to the individual churches, you'll be able to find that out. I'm not sure that there's a place you can go where everything's listed. And you can even also just check on Facebook because between the churches, synagogues, and mosques, a lot of them are posting what they're doing for virtual prayer. Oh, good. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. That's yeah, great. Yeah, somebody should do that. <laughs> I think that's a really good idea too, because a lot of uh, faith-based communities are offering things not only on Saturdays or Sundays, typical days for corporate worship, but they're offering things throughout the week that they're using uh, social media to to uh, post. And so, I, I would recommend that as well. Thank you. That's very helpful. <clears throat> this has obviously been a tough time for nonprofits to raise money. Uh, an anonymous uh, but kind listener would like to know, are there any strategies or ways that folks can help nonprofits right now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so that, that's kind of why we established that needs survey on our website. So if they're, if they want to go there and so if you look at that needs website, I don't know if you want to bring it up. Um, it, you know, it'll, it'll change over the next week, but it will never be gone. So it will either move from one thing or the other. So you'll always be able to see on there what they need and who the organization is and how to contact them. So if your interest is even puppies and kittens, they're on there. So it's, it's not just people. Everybody's, you know, the nonprofits support anything from the environment to the community to, like I said, dogs, cats, everything. So you'll, you'll find them all on there. So wherever your heart is is calling you that's where you can donate to those organizations you'll be able to tell what it is that they need and believe me they all need money yeah for sure for and, sure I mean, it's a difficult time because the donors are right. about lending or not lending about giving money uh, and so you know it's a tough time for nonprofits because it is, and, and nonprofits are also very conscious of the fact that the economy is the way it is, and they're, you know, they're not going to be as, as um, perhaps as aggressive as they have been in the past or assertive in the past. So that's why we created that needs survey, so that you'll be able to tell what they need and how to reach out to them directly if you've got a specific um, cause in mind that you want to help. Great. Thank you. Thank you all so much, Mayor. That concludes our question portion for this evening. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. It's been uh, great. And I have a couple of things I have to cover in closing here. Um, so please make sure that this is really important that you complete the census. I, I, I did it for my house. It's done. Um, the information collected from the census helps West Palm Beach and Palm Beach County continue to provide the programs and resources that help our community. Um, so really, it's very easy. It takes no time. Go online, fill it out, and uh, it's so important that you complete that census. Uh, I also want you to know that, there, as I said earlier, there are more town halls on COVID-19 scheduled for this week. Uh, two more today. Uh, five o'clock is Seniors, Children, and Families with Commissioner Paduzzi. And at 6.30 is Housing and Homeless Services with Commissioner Nearing. Uh, and then, then tomorrow at 1 p.m., Commissioner Schoff will have a town hall on economic support and recovery. And again, you can find the full schedule on wpb.org forward slash COVID-19. 
Uh, West Palm Beach and Palm Beach County are part of the governor's phase one reopening plan. And Reverend Scroggins uh, talked a little bit about that. So restaurant and retails can come can open back up, but they have to be at 25% capacity. Barber shops, cosmetology salons, and shops can open back up, but they have to have enhanced safety measures. Um, and we also really um, uh, encourage you, beg you, uh, to continue to wear your masks in public. It's so critically important. Uh, follow the CDC guidelines of six feet distance, wash your hands, and don't congregate in groups. Be smart, be safe, and stay healthy. Together, we'll be able to get through this. I want to thank everybody who participated in this today, all of our panelists. Thank you. Uh, and thank the folks who listened in and asked all those great questions. So again, thank you, everyone. And we're going to sign off. Bye. <laughs>